here we are again having just got over the shock of the cyclops eating people but being ultimately defeated by odysseus in the last chapter we are now reading chapter three the sack of winds where will odysseus's journey take him next remember the very last bit of the last chapter he offended polyphemus who happens to be poseidon's son and so now poseidon has the opportunity to take revenge being the god of the sea chapter three the sack of the winds the ocean was calm there was not a breath of a breeze on the sea my men had to row until their hands were studded with blisters they bandaged their hands the blood oozed through the bandages day after day they to they toiled it was as if we were crossing the surface of a mirror very calm sea at last we saw that something was approaching us it was flashing and bobbing reflecting the light of the sun a floating island surrounded by walls of bronze i'd heard stories of this place from sailors i'd heard it offered a welcome and sure enough when we came closer the guards atop those bronze walls shouted king aeolus offers sanctuary in exchange for tales of your adventures we rode through a pair of bronze gates and tethered our ship to the jetty we were led up a cobblestone hill to the bronze palace of the mad king aeolus he loved to hear the stories of the world but he would never choose to leave his island for seven days and nights his halls echoed with our tales we filled our bellies with roasted meat all this time there was not the faintest whisper of wind outside when i mentioned this to aeolus he cackled and nodded his head at last the time had come to resume our voyage his soldiers led my men down to the harbour the old king gestured to me to follow him up a flight of stairs to his bedroom he led me to a curtain in the corner gleefully he pulled it back i saw an alcove i saw a sack tied tight with a silver thong it wriggled and writhed the king looked carefully around then he gestured to me to come closer i came so close i could taste his breath on my tongue he whispered Zeus is my friend. He is in the middle of a feud with his brother Poseidon. He has stolen the winds of the world from the sea god and put them in this sack. He has given it to me for safekeeping. I am to open it when I see fit. It crosses my mind that I could let out one gust to fill your sail. With that wind behind you, you'd be carried across the surface of the sea as surely as an arrow loosed from a bow. I will give the sack to you. When at last you plant your feet on Ithacan shingle, you can open it and set free the gusts and gales. You will soon be home. So a small gust out the bag, but then save the rest for when he gets home. I wept for joy. The old man knelt beside the sack and untied the knot in the silver thong. He dipped his hand inside and pulled out what appeared to me to be a writhing snake of soap a snake of smoke he opened his hand and the snake vanished we shivered iolus pulled the thong tight again and gave the sack to me the king and i went down the cobblestone hill to the harbour i climbed aboard the ship i placed the sack just behind the prow on the foredeck my men were waiting at their benches the people of the island were lining the jetty i shouted king aeolus has given me the finest gift that ever i received in my entire life this sack holds a treasure greater than all the spoils of troy his subjects cheered and the king beamed from ear to ear my crew stared at the sack once we were out of those bronze gates, we unfurled the sail and lifted the oars from the water. The old man spoke the truth. The sail filled with wind. No need to row, no need to steer. It was as if we were following a path across the trackless waves of the sea. For nine days and nights, I sat on the foredeck, the sack by my side. I kept a vigil, scanning the horizon, never sleeping, desperate for a glimpse of Ithaca. Then there she was. I knew her shape so well, the valleys, the secret places only I had seen, the terraces, the vineyards, the beaches, the outline of my beloved Ithaca. 
Great Mount Neriton rising high into the sky, the land that gave me life. But my vigil had taken its toll. With relief came exhaustion. I told my men to wake me when at last the prow ground against the beach. I lay on that foredeck, the sack beside me, and fell into a deep sleep. Under the sea, Poseidon saw his moment. He lifted his hand. His gesture caused a huge wave which our ship had to climb to overcome. As the prow of the ship rose, the sack beside me slid from the foredeck and landed in the lap of one of my crew. He turned to one of his friends and said, Did you hear what Odysseus told that king? He said that this sack contains the finest gift he'd ever received. Everything else he shared with us. You ought to share this too. After all, we've risked our lives as often as he has. But this treasure, he seems to want to keep for himself. Where's the justice in that? What harm would there be in seeing what he's been given? He untied the thong. He pushed his thumb into the mouth of the sack. And as he did so, he was blasted from his bench onto the deck. He saw a thousand wriggling snakes of smoke rising from the sack into the sky. Poseidon had all the weapons he needed now. The sky darkened. The waves rose up around us. The sail was torn to shreds. The ship was spinning. The spinning woke me. I sat up. Poseidon spat brine into my eyes. I looked for Ithaca, but already she was so vague that she might have just been the edge of a cloud. I reached out across the side of the ship and tried to clutch at her, as if to pull her towards me, but she was gone. I was so seized with despair, it was all I could do to hold back from hurling myself into the waves. The North Sea tossed us for the south wind to catch. The west and the east winds fought over us. Sometimes we were climbing mountains of water. Sometimes we were sinking into valleys and the sky could not be seen. It was clear that Poseidon wanted us dead. How would we ever see our homes, our hearths, our fields and farms and families again? because one crew member got greedy. The whole boat is now in jeopardy, in grave danger. Poseidon is doing his worst. Tune in the next week, or next time even, to find out what happens next in chapter four. Until then, stay safe.